Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout and be entered into the month-long giveaways, culminating into a Black Lotus and 1st edition Charizard. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono blue suspicious stowaway deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. The 2 mana 1 1 human rogue werewolf from Midnight Hunt cannot be blocked, and when a stowaway deals combat damage to a player, we get to draw a card and then discard a card. That's the daybound side. And then it's pretty easy for this deck to simply pass the turn and let it switch to nighttime, in which case we get the seafaring werewolf, a 2 1 that cannot be blocked, and when it deals combat damage to a player, it draws a card. So an incredibly powerful card if we can keep it nighttime, and our entire deck deck is built around trying to keep this in the nighttime side. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, we'll have plenty of instants, a few counter spells of course, and then we also have a snow theme with Faceless Haven as one of the payoffs, as well as Ascendant Spirit, a 1 mana 1-1 one, one, that for 2 snow mana can turn into a 2-3 Spirit Warrior, subsequently for 3 snow mana it turns into a 4-4 four, four Spirit Warrior Angel with flying, and afterwards for 4 snow mana we can put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and when this creature deals combat damage to a player we get to draw a card, and we can potentially activate that last ability multiple times, so we get several instances of that card draw effect, as well as getting more plus one counters. So Ascendant Spirit is definitely one of the main finishers in our deck, and having those activated abilities available at instant speed also plays well with our Suspicious Stowaway, as we can simply pass a turn, and then of course activating the Spirit doesn't count as casting any spells, and we can keep up all our author instants at the same time. And then we also have the full playset of Malevolent Hermit, the 2 mana 2-1 two human wizard, can pay blue mana and sacrifice it to counter target non-creature spell unless its controller pays 3 generic mana, so pretty good against the various epiphany combo decks that try to resolve expensive non-creature spells. And then we can also disturb Hermit out of our graveyard for 3 mana, in which case it enters the battlefield as Benevolent Geist, a 2-2 flyer that says non-creature spells we control cannot be countered. And then we also have two copies of Desert Doom as a 5 mana 5-5 five five legendary dragon with flying, and as long as it's untapped it has Ward 4, so the opponent will have to pay 4 mana to target it with removal spells. And when it deals combat damage to a player we get to draw a card, and then if we have fewer than 3 cards in hand we get to draw cards equal to the difference. So Desert Doom isn't particularly synergistic with the rest of the deck, since we're kind of this draw go style deck that wants to pass the turn with a bunch of mana up, and Desert Doom costs 5 mana to play at sorcery speed, but it does give us a bit more board presence, whereas most of the other creatures in the deck are kind of small, so that's the main reason that Desert Doom is in the deck, otherwise we could play with maybe like a Spectral Adversary as a 2-1 flash that plays well with the rest of our game plan. And then taking a look at some of our non-creature spells, we've got the full set of Fading Hope as a cheap bounce spell, returning a creature to its owner's hand. Can also use it to bounce our own creature if needed, to maybe save it from removal. And if that creature had mana value 3 or less, we also get to scry 1. We've got Consider as a cheap cantrip, letting us take a look at the top card, and then we can put it in the graveyard if we want to, and then draw. So this is also potentially a way for us to put Hermit in the graveyard for free, so we can disturb it into Benevolent Geist. And then we've got Concerted Defense, a 1 mana instant that counters target non-creature spell unless its controller pays 1 generic mana, plus an additional 1 generic mana for each creature in our party. Creatures in our party include clerics, rogues, warriors, and wizards. And we can actually complete a full party in this deck. It's not trivial, but Ascendant Spirit, if you get it to the second level here where it's a 2-3, it is a spirit warrior, so warrior counts as one of the party types. Then we've got Suspicious Stowaway, only on the front half of the card it counts as a rogue, so once it transforms to nighttime it loses that extra creature type. We've got Malevolent Hermit, which is a wizard, and then last but not least we can also activate Faceless Haven to potentially complete our party as it has all creature types, so for each Faceless Haven we can activate we can add another party type to our team. So Concerted Defense, just another cheap counterspell, easier to keep up than let's say a Negate, and for the most part it does the same job, can counter those expensive epiphanies as well. Then at 2 mana we've got Disdainful Stroke, counter target spell with mana value 4 or greater, great at countering all those Asikas, Chariots, Goldspan, Dragon, and of course Epiphany. We've got Into the Royal as a cheap bounce spell for 2 mana, can also kick it for 2 additional mana, in which case we get to draw a card and can bounce any non-land permanent. 
And then we've got two copies of Reject to counter a creature or planeswalker spell unless its controller pays three generic mana, and then also gets exiled if it's countered successfully. So Reject being played over, let's say, a Juari Disruption, just because the land half of Disruption isn't incredibly useful when we want to have as many snow sources as possible for Ascendant Spirit and Faceless Haven. And then the full playset of Divide by Zero as a very versatile bound spell slash counter spell returns target spell or permanent with mana value one or greater to its owner's hand. So we can use it on the stack, but also retroactively to maybe bounce a creature that's already in play. And then it also allows us to learn one of our seven card sideboard lessons in best of one, including two copies of environmental sciences to find a land and gain two teachings as card draw, as well as introduction to prophecy. We've got expanded anatomy, putting two plus one plus one counters on a creature, giving it vigilance until end of turn, can maybe be useful in a racing situation, and also synergizes nicely with our desert doom. And then we've got introduction to annihilation as removal, and mascot exhibition as a nice curve topper, making three different creature tokens. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play. Our hand seems fine. Turn two could already play a stowaway. Or I could play Hermit first to potentially protect it, which I also don't mind. Opponent could be blue red or blue black and have a removal spell turn two. As we see the mountain. Alright, so we'll hit for two. Play a stowaway. And have a blue mana available for protection. So they might have another removal spell in their turn, but so be it. Yep, yeah, divide by zero. At least we get to replay it. And then do I want to tap out for Hermit, keep up Reject, opponent on blue-red. So they could have like the Egg, but we can always bounce that later. I'm not too worried about Goldspan Dragon yet. So I guess tapping out for Hermit's reasonable. That way it's going to be easier to switch it to Nighttime next turn, as I can just pass with all my instants and Hermit activation available. Stowaway also quite synergistic with Hermit, as we can potentially discard it, just to get the Disturb value. Opponent's going to main phase a Deluge, okay. And Divide is a great draw, so... It's going to turn to Knight here, and then we'll have, hopefully, a few counter spells available. Probably discard a Fading Hope. Opponent might try to double spell to switch it back to daytime. Best case scenario, they tap out for a gold span dragon we can reject. That's going to be iteration into a removal spell, most likely. Sure. And Cinderclasm instead. Well, double Cinderclasm. Is going to be difficult to counter. I guess I can divide uh, one of them and then Hermit the other. And then by dividing the copy, they don't get to put it back in their hand. And then what do I learn for? Probably teachings. Concerted defense is reasonable. So I don't think I've got the right setup to turn it back to knight at the moment. So I'm just going to probably attack and then teachings. Or I could teachings first. Which is also reasonable. Alright. Let's attack. And then it's become clear our opponent's more of an Epiphany deck than a Dragon's deck. 
So both Reject and Fading Hope are not going to be particularly useful. And I'll just pass here with double defense available. Can play Sun Spirit later. Alright, so the game goes on. Opponent still with a pretty full grip. Step one, attack. One Fading Hope could still be useful for bouncing a Hall of the Storm Giants eventually. Right, opponent attempting to divide. So this will counter it. And I'll play Spirits, I can level up and still do other things. And then now we might have a better situation to pass a turn and let it switch to night. Although the opponent's deck is also pretty good at double spelling to switch it back to daytime. We'll see. So if I level up Spirit and they attempt to Cinder Classm, I can still level up Spirit in response to save it. Getting this to be a warrior also means an extra type for defense. So let's level this up. Opponent foretells. Sure. All right, so it's finally nighttime. Uh, am I leveling up Ascendant Spirit here is a question. I think I am. Because I want to keep it nighttime. Another Ascendant Spirits. Okay, and then could still play one creature out. I think I'd rather keep up more instants here. And then next turn Hermits can potentially help as well. Now we did lose an extra creature type for our concerted defense, unfortunately, and a battle of frost and fire dealing four to everything. So defense is not good enough to counter that, unfortunately. Can't quite level up my ascendant spirits to save it. So yeah, it's a pretty effective one. I guess I can bounce one of my creatures in response. And which one should that be? I guess a stowaway since we have another Ascendant Spirit in hand. So I can play Stowaway still on the nighttime side. And then probably pass with Defense and Divide by Zero up as opposed to trying to play Hermits. has got nine mana total. Flashback iteration, go for Epiphany, and then we can counter both essentially. Yeah. So we want to counter the real Epiphany. 
and then divide the copy. And what do we learn for opponents at 9? Close call. I guess sciences is fine. Desert Doom, not a bad draw. So if I were to animate Faceless Haven, I can't quite activate both. So maybe the play is attack with Stowaway and then play Desert Doom. Which will survive another battle, Frost and Fire at least. And this reject is probably not too useful. So I can do this and sciences or play spirit. Although there's a tiny chance I could have burned the house down, in which case I don't want to overextend. Although if I sciences, then I could next turn double haven to kill them. So I guess that's not a huge concern. Fading Hope will have to be a 5-mana Fading Hope. Which leaves the door open for Faceless Haven to close out the game. Two cards in hand. So if our opponent has another Deluge, I want to close out the game. If they have a removal spell, they could kill one of the Havens, which could be unfortunate, but I think I go for it. Divide by zero doesn't work, so has to be a red burn spell or I guess another fading hope. All right, Cathartic Pyre will do. And then what to discard? Maybe a hermit. Back to nighttime. Haven is lethal. All right, hazard will do. So animating Haven doesn't work in the face of Hall of the Storm Giants. Unfortunately, it does mean that my opponent will get to flashback Deluge and potentially chain together some powerful spells. But uh, let's play Hermits, which could maybe counter the Deluge and still play Desert Doom. And if they flash back, I'll happily use the Hermit here. Of course, if they had flashed back Deluge in response to me playing Hermit, then the Haven could have closed out the game. Alright, GG's. Looks like we got there, so hard-fought battle against the Blue Red Epiphany combo deck. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn one spirit, turn two. Got a couple options as we're facing a shambling ghast. So hopefully they cannot sacrifice it to kill my spirit. Can also take out stowaway if it gets sacrificed later. So for now, I think I'll attack and if they want to jump, I'll just level up ascendant spirit. That's fine. Grows up to a 2-3, so it doesn't die to the minus one, minus one. Is 
So our opponent makes a treasure. And Infernal Grasp will deal with our Ascendant Spirit. Fair enough. Night Witch has a turn. So I could wait a turn on playing Stowaway until I also have Reach Act mana available. And then for now keep up all my counter spells. And then can also potentially stroke like a 4 or 5 mana play. Alright, Haven's gonna get busy. Cannot bounce that one with Divide by Zero. So I'll just take 5 and then consider. I guess I can consider now. And defense, I don't think I need. Looking for more threats, like Ascendant Spirit. But for now, the plan is to play the Stowaway. They could activate Haven again, which would be annoying, but we can eventually play a large spirit to block it. Right, opponent taps out for Professor Onyx, and between Disdainful Stroke and Reject, it's a close call. I think I will reject. So we'll hit with the Stowaway. Would have liked to find a land here. I think I discard a Stowaway and then play another one. Reason to keep Disdainful Stroke of Reject is that we can counter a Blood on the Snow with it. Plus, Reject also exile Professor Onyx so they can get it back. Opponent's looking at the graveyard, so Blood on the Snow incoming. Nope, Spider Queen. Fair enough. All hits, and then... Probably have to keep up Divide by Zero here. Could discard Hermit. Could also play Hermit. Which can also potentially counter a Sweeper or another Planeswalker. Um, but definitely want to keep the land. So, I think discarding Hermit and then... Let's see, Concerted Defense can also probably go... And then I think I can afford to play Ascendant Spirits, which I can level up if they don't force me to counter anything. Alternatively, I could have just passed to transform the Stowaways, which also would have been fine. Take the one. There's a Blood on the Snow. Which we'll send back, and then could go for teachings. All right, opponent playing the land makes that a bit more difficult, but can just loot it away with a stowaway, which is fine. And then disdainful stroke, of course, a perfect answer as well. So I think that means I can afford to level up ascendant spirits. Attack, loot away teachings. And into the Royal can probably go too. They do have Field of Ruin to destroy Haven, but still want to hit my land drop. We've got our werewolves now. Opponent kind of locked into replaying their sweeper. I could just divide again, I suppose. Make them spend six mana next turn, so they're kind of locked into the same pattern. And then... I guess I'll go for sciences here. Shambling Gas does allow them to switch it back to daytime, unfortunately. And now... I guess I have the option of leveling up Ascendant Spirits. Six, seven mana. Yeah, not enough to uh, level up all the way and keep up Disdainful Stroke. So instead, I guess 
I don't want to attack into the ghasts, which lets them kill the stowaway. So maybe... Just uh, attack first with the stowaways. See what we can find. So would like to switch it back to nighttime. So I'll discard an island and then... I guess sciences can go. And I'll pass. And then I'll attack with a spirit once we can fly over Shambling Gas, then they cannot easily kill one of my werewolves. Alright, once again our opponent gets to switch it back to daytime. So Ascendant Spirits can attack alongside the stowaways and then probably just play Desert Doom. Opponent can maybe learn for Mascot Exhibition. Goes for Confront a Pass to get back Spider Queen. Fading Hope the draw, discard land, and discard land. Just play Desert Doom, I think, and then if they play Spider Queen, we should be fine. Professor Onyx has been exiled. So, yep, there's Spider Queen. My children drench their hands Can bounce one of the spiders. And then, let's see. I guess we'll bounce it now. So we can maybe pass and turn it to nighttime with the stowaway. And then another haven. Alright, put and packs it in. So next turn I could have attacked, leveled up Ascendant Spirit, so either they block Desert Doom or Ascendant Spirit, either way we get to draw a card, and then we should have been in a pretty commanding position. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hands not particularly great. No creatures, only two lands. And these bounce balls also get worse on the draw. All right, this I can keep. And then probably bottom consider. Could be up against a creature deck, in which case defense is not going to be particularly amazing. And I guess we have Hermit to do a similar job already. So maybe bottom the defense. All right, turn one islands already regretting my decision, but let's try and resolve spirits. One in blue reds for tells. So it could be another Epiphany combo deck. So what do I want to do here? In the early stages. Don't think I want to play Hermit right now. So I can level up spirit or do nothing and just sit for one. Yeah, I'm not that likely to wanna counter anything with defense this early. And this plays around like a spike field hazard dealing one damage. Iteration I might have countered, but so be it. Alright, so now hit for two, play Hermits. So we've got a bit of pressure. A few counter spells in hand with two types for the party. Got a wizard and a warrior. Another card foretold. And then I could consider, although my opponent could have a Demon Bolt foretold, in which case they would get to kill my spirits, which is bad. So I can level up, or I can keep up double defense and hermits. 
opponent's at 16, so if I hit for 6, it's a 3 turn clock. If I hit for 4 and then level up, it would still be a 3 turn clock. I guess I'll uh, play it safe. Another iteration. I think I don't need to counter the card draw spells at this point anymore. The one concern is Blood City Pun just ends up being a blue red dragon's deck and plays a gold span dragon. That one I cannot counter with defense. But I think we're trying to just protect our creatures and counter epiphanies from now on. Alright, opponent does have the Behold the Multiverse, another card foretold, no red mana up, so probably no Demon Bolt to worry about anymore, and then I can level up. And I guess for a single white there's nothing to worry about. Probably don't need land 6. Okay, so if I were to level up once again, I only have one mana up, that's probably not acceptable, so we'll just hit for 6. And then probably fine to play another spirit out. And I have to imagine that three counter spells will be enough. All right, galvanic iteration. That happens. And a windfall, so I can just counter both, and that's game. Alright, and our opponent explodes. The foretold cards, two saw it coming and a doom scar. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and this hand's not particularly exciting. To have double considered to dig for one of my creatures while holding up concerted defense. Hope to not be up against a creature deck pretty much. I guess I'll try it. So I want to find a stowaway or an ascendant spirit as soon as possible. Turn one forests, alright. So concerted defense, not particularly great in this matchup. Although it can maybe counter a ranger class or chariot. So now the question is, do I play stowaway or do I keep up defense to counter potential ranger class? I think I'm playing stowaway here and then next turn I can switch it to nighttime already. Trying to find some bounce spells to answer opposing creatures. At least my opponent won't be able to kill the stowaway here. And there's a pack leader. Alright, so glad I didn't keep up defense. So, all hits. And then one land can go. Possible I should have waited a turn on playing Faceless Haven in case I need all my blue mana, but we'll pass for now. I did lose my one extra rogue, so defense gets a bit worse. Right, and a mammoth, so we'll consider a response to try and find maybe a counter spell. Right, stroke doesn't work. Times two, so we're behind on board. So that's where finding fading hope as a bounce spell would be great. But we have answers for expensive non-creature spells, especially. Suppose I can always animate faceless haven, but. Uh, yeah, not loving my position. Opponent attacks, gets to trigger pack tactics. So we're losing the race and our opponents keeping up with card advantage. Alright, that's I guess a nice exchange here. Master Symmetrist probably implies that the opponent has the 
5 mana enchantment that doubles all creatures' power. Definitely a card I was considering briefly when building that deck. And if that's the case, we do have some answers for that, so I guess that's the saving grace. But still need to find answers for the creatures in play. And still nothing. Alright, so I might have to fire up Faceless Haven here. And then I might still be dead to my opponent activating the pack leader for Trample. Blizzard Brawl. So I can animate Haven to have an extra creature type. And then Defense, but our opponent can still pay for it. So it's not going to do much for me. And then I'm still chumping the Mammoth. So yeah, this is a bit of a disaster. Sure, let it go. Opponent's got lethal on board before they even animate Faceless Haven. So yeah, that was kind of my concern when keeping this hand. Concerted defense not particularly great against a creature-heavy deck. So I have to animate just to chum block and stay alive. Might as well chum the mammoth. I could defense a chariot at least, but it's going to be a troll instead. So yeah, things just didn't line up for us this game as we drew a bunch of lands with our stowaway. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand. Opponent on blue-black. Make that Grixis. So probably not a high likelihood of the stowaway surviving here if we play it. Could play Hermits, which is kind of a must deal with. And then next turn I could play stowaway with Fading Hope backup. Sure. And Cathartic Pyre deals with Hermits. At least no Spike Field Hazard to exile Hermit, so we can still potentially disturb it. And then I'm not too worried about any 4 drops to counter with this Daneful Stroke. So I think going still away, keep up Fading Hope is fine. And then next turn I can hold up Divide by Zero, hopefully, with a stowaway in play. Opponent does seem to have their own Fading Hope. Alright, fair enough. At least a day and night cycle has started, so we might be able to play this as a werewolf the turn we played. Opponent foretells and missed our land drop. That's a big deal. Now we'll have this Daneful Stroke available. Another Fading Hope incoming. Sure. Put on Desperate to find a land. Looks like they found one. No, oh, just an iteration. That has made up for the card disadvantage from Fading Hope. The rest they cannot cast and still no land. Alright. So, don't want to cast two spells if I can help it, so probably just tow away and pass. Or I could play Desert Doom now that the shields are down. Can't imagine my opponent having an easy time answering Desert Doom. And again, not too worried about any particular 4-drop that I need to hold up this Daneful Stroke. 
Prismari Command themselves. Make a treasure, draw to discard two. Yeah, I mean, iteration failing to find a land was pretty unlucky. So, Desert Doom can attack. And I'll play one stowaway. Still have two counters available. In case of any sweeper. It's your opponent on the Grixis Leer deck, essentially. Get to untap. And do I want to main phase play Malevolent Hermit? Eh, probably fine to just attack first. Probably see a removal spell on the werewolf, no? Alright, opponent falls to eight. And then playing a hermit seems reasonable. Opponent with a deluge in response. No real reason to counter that. Just uh, counter whatever removal or board impacting card they try to play. There's no, like, uncounterable sweeper that I have to worry about. So this game kind of highlighted the importance of being able to hit your land drops. So, not sure what they were scrying towards with Fading Hope. Galvanic Iteration, sure. Two mana left for iteration, sure. Opponent can draw all the cards they want on the way out. I'm not gonna stand between someone and their card draw. Our opponent's still deep in the tank. Yeah, the blue matchups are pretty decent. We get to play this draw-go game, and uh, we've got plenty of answers for Epiphany. And we got to see Desert Doom shine in this one as well. Not easy to deal with for the opponents, and yeah, can quickly put the game away for us. So overall, good to see lots of blue matchups, which is where we want to be when playing this deck. Let's say we're playing against a mono-white and mono-green aggro decks. Those matchups are going to be pretty tough, because Especially the mono-white matchup, the opponent has lots of cheap creatures they can play, which line up well against our somewhat expensive counter spells. Whereas, at least in a green matchup, if the opponent tries to play cards like Old Growth Troll or Seekas Chariot, we can have potential answers in the form of bound spells and counter spells, which line up a little bit better than against mono-white. So, overall, don't necessarily think this will be a meta-defining deck. But if you're looking for something to beat all the blue epiphany decks, then this is not a bad place to be. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.